This is going to be a quick video because I want to talk about the two extra timers that we find in the CCW workbench. That's uh, the t uh, Ton Off um, and the uh, T Pulse. The T Pulse is a lot easier to explain, so I'm going to do that first. But basically, if I have, sometimes I just want to make sure an output gets turned on for a certain amount of time and turn it off, but I only want a momentary signal to do that. Um, I don't want to latch it in, you know, but I know how much time. So as long as it's got like a, a blip, you know, it will turn out. Think of it like a fuse and dynamite. I don't need to like light, hold the lighter and hold it to the fuse in order for that to actually go off. I just need to light it, let the spark go, and let that timer go, if that makes sense. That's what a, a pulse timer will do. You know, good for maybe um, sending signals to a PLC that you don't want to keep something on during the duration of a job. Um, but you want to make sure that you send that signal and keep and have it turn on without having another command to turn it off or a, a creative way to maybe um, uh, drop the rung with the done bit or something along that line. So, um, but that's just basically what a, what a TP timer does. It programs the same with the qubit and the en enable bit and all that fun stuff. So everything, that's pretty straightforward. Now the timer on off is interesting. All right, I'll be, I'll be honest. Um, I was playing around with that today and I thought, oh, that's a little interesting. And basically, you can set it up so that it works just like a timer on and a timer off, except the queue doesn't turn on until the on delay timer times, and it doesn't turn off until after that that drops, and we'll demonstrate that. So the way I can think of it is, say you have two motors, and so you hit a push, you know, and you want to make sure that the second motor starts three seconds after the other one every time and finishes three minute, three seconds after the other one finishes. So kind of a sequential thing. So th I can use a t the T this, this command, which is just to basically delay the start of the one and delay the turning off of the one based upon the conditions of the first motor. And I'm gonna simulate that with a push button. So let me turn on my simulator. And I've just got a couple different runs just to show you. And because this, if you it just, it programs just like the, the on delay timer and the off delay timer does. Um, this uh, falling edge thing, it basically only turns off when the uh, the timer is a uh, time, the off delay portion of the timer is timing. Otherwise, it stays on, I've noticed. Um, but we'll, we'll demonstrate that once I can get my simulator on. And we can demonstrate. Okay, I had to restart my simulator because uh, I didn't close it right the last time, so I had to kill the program and try it again. Um, so here's my simulator. Now I'm going to turn. I'm going to turn on the power, and I'm going to download it. Okay. So let me hit download. And I'm going to pause while it's downloading just to save you time. So now I've just transitioned to run mode. After it downloaded, I just saved you the 30 seconds of it doing it. So you're welcome. And as you can see, a couple things. Um, and I'm just going to move this off to the side. If you need to see the outputs, look right here. They're all right. And you can see right now the T on off falling edge is active. Because it's technically not the it's not detected a falling edge, just kind of a reset button. But let me show you the um, pulse timer. If I click this button here, you'll see that that this light here will turn on right away and stay on. Even if I hold that light that button, it's going to stay on and work like an on delay timer almost. Okay. If I turn it off, it will reset. But let me hit it again. And look, it keeps timing. If I turn it on again, it, it's timing out before I can do it again. So while it's timing, it's going to hold. It's going to make sure it pulses out. So I let go of it. It's still timing. Even if I try to do it again, it's not letting me reset it until it gives it goes through that five second the whole way. So just keep that in mind. It's a it's a go and no turning back until it's done. So that's a pulse timer. Pretty fun to use. Um, has some applications to it. I kind of like using them. Um, in Siemens specifically. So here's the on-off timer setup, okay? So right now, basically I have a setup when the timer on timing, the timer off timing, and, and then the, the two different bits on so we can see when those are going true or not, okay? The Q bit's pretty straightforward. So now I'm gonna hit, hit the zero, 
and we're, we should see the zero light turn on, and we should see the two light turn on. Now the zero light shouldn't be on, sorry. The two light should be on and the uh, three light should be on. Yep. And now when it hits three seconds, this will turn off and this one will flip over. Okay. So while this is at its max, so I'm running my motor. Basically, there's going to be three bits on. The Q is going to be on and the falling edge and the rising edge bits going to be on. Okay. But once I drop power to my rung or turn off my switch, you'll notice the Q stays on. But both of these, the rising edge and falling edge bits, turn off. And that's why, when so that, that last one is that it's, it's ramping down. So think of this as a ramp up and a ramp down. So ramp up, ramp down. And you can see how it's timing through. If I turn it off, it times out. So if I turn it on, it doesn't quite get to three seconds. If I turn it off, it just it, it doesn't even trigger. So if I do it again, less than three seconds, turn off, it doesn't even go. It, it, until it gets up to that three seconds, the, the, the off delay will not kick in. Okay? See that? So I'm off, three seconds. Boom. Three, three are on. And once I flip that switch off, you can see this, this run will be true and the Q will be true and that's it until at the very end, so so the, the falling edge bit. So that's how the, the T off, the, the, the timer on off works. One other quick thing that I thought was handy, not that I stumbled upon, but just want to make you aware of, if you look right here and hit the expand, you'll see all your code lined up here with commands, okay? So if you wanted to change an XIC to an XIO, this is probably the easy way to go about it is just by literally just going in here and changing it, and it will change it down here. Um, so, whoops. And click away, so make sure it goes through. And I don't know why, it, but. So now let me go back again, XIC, XIC, hit enter. It worked for me earlier. There it goes. Or if I want an XIO, it changed it for me. Okay? So just keep in mind, that would be the easiest way to make edits. So if you look here on the side over here, like right over here, these little arrows, if you see off to the side that I'm drawing, um, that's where you can go in there and um open up the command line or do some editing uh, on the bits themselves to make your life a little bit easier if you, you know, so and if i wanted to i could go in here and say um xic pb3 or pb2 um if i knew that was a bit or if there's a bit that i could utilize like m bit one and then maybe do ton and it'll create it for me ton ton underscore one and then i could do my preset time of t three s um ote if i want to turn on a light i can and you can literally just maybe copy and paste the above if you wanted to and change it up so copy paste and change it to four maybe if you want to copy and paste one of these and change it to six that could save you some time as well and look it's all right here might need to adjust that a little bit but you get the you get the gist so t There it goes. Oh, I need to add a, a question mark, and that was what it was missing. Okay, so um, th there's a couple of tricks for the CCW. I hope that was helpful. Short video, and we'll, and um, helps you understand those timers and maybe a little command line programming.